Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicholas Chomp, and I'm an electrical engineering and mathematics major at the University of Scranton. Uh, this past summer, I was fortunate enough to be part of NASA MARTI. MARTI stands for Multidisciplinary Aeronautics Research Team Initiative. It's formerly known as one of the aeronautics academies. Um, and we designed and researched small unmanned aer aerial vehicle management systems this summer. The project I worked on was called SAFE 50, which stands for Safe Autonomous Flight Environment Within 50 Feet of the Ground. And to give you kind of a perspective, one day UAVs will be a part of our daily lives. And activities such as these will be done with UAVs. So to give you an example, we have cargo delivery, search and rescue, rail surveillance, etc. Uh, our project was broken down into three specific problem domains. The indoor autonomous flight team, the aerodynamic modeling team, and the outdoor autonomous flight team. Uh, the graph on the right kind of shows our emblem of the project and how the three kind of intertwine with each other. Um, I'm going to look at that for a second. But what I specifically worked on was outdoor localization. So we know that UAVs can be uh, very dangerous in urban environments, right? With the integration of LiDAR and GPS technologies, we were able to increase the robustness and accuracy of GPS localization in urban areas. When you're in an urban area with different obstacles, such as tall buildings, satellite signals can be obstructed, reflected, and then causing position inaccuracies in real time. So what, we, what our motivation was, it was to overcome GPS losses and inaccuracies in urban areas. Some of the benefits would be accuracy and robustness improvements, safety for people on the ground, and societal integration one day because it's going to be a real factor. Real quick, just how GPS works. Uh, GPS satellites are rotating around us 24-7, uh, and you need at least four GPS satellites at a time for the X, Y, and Z positions relative to the center of the Earth, and a fourth dimension for uh, time dilation because of the satellites. Uh, just a quick tidbit there. But some of the problems, like I said before, are <coughs> GPS signal in urban canyons, where GPS signals are reflected off buildings, causing GPS inaccuracies because you're getting the same signal from two different sources at different times. Um, as you can see here, you have one signal going directly to it and one bouncing off a building, but they're both being received by the GPS receiver. And that could cause a position an inaccuracy because they're coming at different times. Um, and then the second case is that we uh, delved into was GPS obstruction, where in, next to a tall building, GPS signals are completely obstructed and you lose GPS signal. So what we proposed, we proposed two different methods, uh, a reflection and shadow ma matching method of satellites, and a LIDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging uh, hardware, with a mesh of a 3D map. So to kind of understand what we mean by a reflection solution is, let's say that the satellite is here and the <coughs> is receiving two signals. Using uh, algorithms we developed in Python and MATLAB, we are able to reflect off of the surface of the satellite and have a direct line of sight, making it one signal that is far more accurate and more robust than having one that is reflecting off a building. Uh, to put it in perspective where, what type of places we were uh, taking data from, uh, one of the places was the NASA Ames campus in Zoga Valley in California. Uh, all around the campus, different types of buildings, I can get a feel. And then downtown San Francisco in the business district where they have various different types of buildings with different uh, infrastructures on them. And one of the main places was the 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel at NASA Ames Center. It is the largest wind tunnel uh, in the world and it is a GPS and accuracy gold mine because of how high it is. And you might be thinking, how hard is it to reflect a GPS signal? Well, when we have a structure like this, where this protrudes about 12 to 15 feet out, that 12 to 15 feet on a reflective GPS signal could be a ton. And a 3D map that you use to model these will just have it to the base of that structure completely straight. So if, when you see this little obstruction, that is what causes the GPS inaccuracies. Uh, to give you a typical GPS reading, the one on the left is uh, non-obstructed GPS signals, and this is an aerial view of the wind tunnel. Um, on, the, on the right, you see this cluster of GPS points that say it's inside. And when you're UAV, you can't be thinking that you're inside a wind tunnel that's 120 feet wide by 8 feet tall, because you'll run into it, cause major damage. Um, 
the algorithms, the implemented algorithms were able to produce these results. At the end of the summer, I was able to get the clusters outside of the wind tunnel and have none in there. So the reflection algorithm itself is being shown to work because of this result. And we were able to increase accuracy of GPS by 50%, uh, just localization, because normal GPS has a percentage difference of about <coughs> one to two meters, and we were able to get it between uh, one meter. Uh, kind of how LiDAR works, it's a uh, substantial light detection and ranging, and how we use it, we modeled a 3D surface of where the GPS uh, signals would be reflected. And 3D maps, you can find them online, they're free, they're readily available, and they're accurate in the X, Y, and Z directions relative to Earth. But like I said, when you have structures that are not flat, it causes a major problem when you're trying to do these algorithms. Uh, some of the cons are that flat walls and structures, most buildings aren't just flat, uh, they're completely rectangular nowadays. And they can be out of date because it's very expensive to get these. Uh, in conclusion, the main point of uh, Safe 50 was to make a more efficient way to manage unmanned aerial vehicles in urban environments and happen completely autonomous without human intervention. Uh, another thing is NASA works on a day-to-day -day basis with the FAA and having a system set up like this to have a foolproof way to ensure public safety is a very, very good thing. And this, I felt like it was a very big step forward in having UAVs being integrated in daily use. Uh, do you have any questions? Thank you. Sure. So what exactly is the algorithm? So when you have this virtual satellite, yes. I don't understand quite how that, that improves your... Exactly. Experience. So our GPS receiver was called the U-Block 740. And what it does, it takes ephemeris, which is just data, straight data from a, a satellite. And it, could get, it gives you its position, its time. And using that and knowing the face of a structure, we could reflect it on that structure knowing uh, just using simple linear algorithm. So it, it's giving the uh, sorry, it's giving the position of the satellite relative to the center of the Earth, and then you're comparing where you are relative to the center of the Earth, and then you're comparing that to the surface that you're reflecting off of, and then you get that, and whatever signal that you see that is being reflected, you just reflect it on a surface to have a straight line of sight. It's kind of a complicated process. Okay. Does that kind of answer your question? No. Okay. Yes. I think it would not only GPS signal reflecting. Yeah, mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Signal reflecting here and there. Yeah. Do you really have a solution? For? That kind of reflection. Do I have a solution for the reflection? No, we already have it. You know, it's outside of the using it. It's even more than you know, the uh, decade. Oh, okay. So why, why, you know, the uh, NASA is now in the attention to using the accurate uh, GPS signal uh, accuracy? The, the main objective of this was not to reinvent the wheel with reflecting signals. It was to try to integrate uh, LiDAR maps with 3D point cloud maps in order to reflect services better to increase accuracy. It wasn't to, wasn't to make a new system. It was to increase GPS accuracy using LiDAR and 3D maps with GPS signals. So when you're in, let's say, San Francisco Business District and a building is selected like this, completely just like this, and you're trying to reflect that signal, you don't know where you're going to reflect it off the top or the bottom. You can't tell where it's getting reflected off of. So let's say you have that 3D map that just has a flat surface. You're never going to know where to reflect that. You could be off by 20 feet in the middle of a road and not know where you are. So that's kind of the, the point of that. Okay, any other questions? Judges? Anything else? Thank you very much.